One of our regular contributors, and I'm glad to say will be on the panel tonight, is Sebastian Gorka, who is the Military Affairs Fellow for the Foundation for Defense of Democracy, and he joins us now. Sebastian, good morning. Good morning to you. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm glad we got a chance to talk before uh, we go downtown, because um, I, I find it interesting that even though this, this seminar is kind of taking place before Peter King's hearings, I'm getting the sense, and I want you to tell me if I'm perhaps premature in my uh, optimism, that maybe we're waking up. I want you to listen to something that Peter King just said uh, not that long ago about um, radical Islam in the United States. They're taking people who are under the radar screen, who are not on any terrorist surveillance list at all, and they're recruiting them to fight against America. And this isn't just me saying this. Eric Holder, uh, in a moment of candor last December, just two months ago, said that he can't sleep at night uh, knowing how many young Muslim men are being radicalized to take up arms against their own country. Okay, now to me, Sebastian, the significant piece of that is not about al-Qaeda recruiting in the United States. I think we know that. The significant piece is Eric Holder, who not all that long ago was sitting in front of a House Judiciary Committee saying, I don't believe Nidal Hassan had uh, any extremist influences um, in his um, attack on troops at Fort Hood. Now, apparently, can't sleep at night. King goes on to say in the same interview that Janet Napolitano used terrorism 62 times during her opening statement. This is a woman who didn't even want to use that word not all that long ago. Is, is there reason to be mildly optimistic about an awareness and, in your view? I agree with you, Fred. I think something uh, very significant has happened in the last uh, nine months to a year. I think the events starting with uh, Major Hassan's uh, murdering 13 people and an unborn child at Fort Hood and then moving on to the attempted bombing of Times Square in New York the Mohammed Mohammed case, the Christmas Day uh, attempted bomb plot on a transatlantic flight. Mm -hmm. These events, I think, are, are creating a, a new awareness in the body politic in America. And I think what we're seeing now on the Hill and in various parts of the administration is the realization that they have to respond to this demand for a reassessment of the war on terror. It's, it's still, we have a long way to go. Let's look at the fact that last week's testimony <laughs> on the hill with regards to uh, the Muslim Brotherhood and the events in Egypt. We had diametrically opposed testimony from two different people, from DNI Clapper and from uh, Director Mueller of the FBI. One of them said the Muslim Brotherhood is a secular organization. The other one was very clear about the Muslim Brotherhood's intentions and their recruiting in the United States and their sleeper cells. So here we still have a lot of homework to do with inside the executive branch, but I think people like Pete King are actually pushing as many people as possible into a position of having to reassess the threat to the United States in the tenth year of this war. Sebastian Major Garrett, uh, two questions. Do you think that as this process continues that you just described, the country can and will do it in sort of a fact-driven, dispassionate, to the degree it's possible when you talk about a subject as important and as emotional as this one? Is that possible, number one? And number two, looking at some of the successfully foiled plots, like the one in Portland, which if I remember correctly, law enforcement said one of the reasons we were able to foil it, foil it is because of cooperation within the Muslim community itself. That is to say, people within the Muslim community are aware of this, are, are vaguely aware of it, tip off the federal authorities, and things are successfully thwarted. Is that a dy dynamic we should also pay attention to as well? Um, on your first question, um, whether we can deal with this dispassionately, I think you just have to look at the way uh, Pete King has been reacted to and the way he's been lambasted by the mainstream media. I think this is going to be very difficult to do in a cool, calm, and facts-based uh, approach. We, I think most of us are going to try to do that, who are on the side for a reassessment, but I think it's not going to be easy. On your second question, um, it's very clear that in this fight, this is not the Cold War, this is not about taking photographs from outer orbit with satellites of tank divisions in East Germany. This type of threat environment is always going to be driven, is always going to be led by human intelligence. And who is going to be one of the primary sources for human intelligence? It's those Muslims who are American citizens who take the U.S. Constitution 
seriously and who believe in the values of the U.S. Constitution, those people who understand the best that Sharia, for example, is antithetical to the values of this great nation. So I think absolutely the local community and those people who are patriotic Americans but also Muslims will be one of the most important sources of intelligence for us. Now let me put this in the context here. We've talked um, uh, time and again about David Cameron's speech in Munich in which he finally said multiculturalism has fa failed in Great Britain. It's time to obviously get tough on some of the extremist elements echoed by Nicolas Sarkozy, Angela Merkel. But you know, you lived in Great Britain and, and if I'm you know, interpreting what you told me uh, privately, felt as though perhaps Great Britain was already perhaps under the grip of some of these Islamic influences. Do you fear that in the United States or are we getting a wake-up call in time? I think what's happened in Germany but especially in the UK is really um, a very good example for us and can be taken as a wake-up call. The fact that you had over the last 15 years a conscious deconstruction of the British identity to a point at which the word British became pejorative and there was no common identity that one could pride with, with, with pride could attach oneself to is one of the reasons we had the 7-7 bombings, one of the reasons that young Muslims born in the United Kingdom searching in an era of multiculturalism for an identity couldn't find one and thus were recruitable by al-Qaeda and extremist groups. So yes, I think the UK is, is, is fighting potentially a losing battle. If you look at what's happened with regards to Islamic law in various counties and various districts in the UK, they've woken up. I think they've woken up perhaps too late or, or very late. And I think for us, that is definitely the scenario of how not to deal with events. And Sebastian, I want to go back to our conversation about the Muslim community, patriotic Americans, respect the Constitution, uh, adhere to as the Muslim faith. There is often a characterization that you must have engagement and outreach and things that appear to the community as overtly hostile or overtly skeptical will diminish their ability or their willingness to cooperate. Do you think that's as fine a line as is sometimes drawn? I think one one needn't be too concerned about um, the perception of over hostile initiatives. The, the bottom line is here: Are there people living in America, uh, uh, immigrants, uh, U.S. nationals, or otherwise, who think that violence against innocents is justified? That's the bottom line. If if that if it can be couched in those terms, then that's all that we need to know. Are there people who say? I have the right to use violence within this structure for my religion or not. That's the only question we need to answer right now. All right. That question will have to be held until uh, uh, this evening when you join us on the panel. Sebastian Garker, thanks for